Last minute IGCSE at Excel physics tips. Now obviously maths is going to be your best friend here and it's so important that you know all your key units. Because you guys will be given the equation sheet, do make sure that you're happy with recognising the numbers that they give you in the exam in terms of which equation they relate to. So for example, and it is important that you know this, speed has a unit of metres per second. Remember, speed is an example of a scalar quantity, which means it has magnitude only and no direction. Distance will be given in metres, time in seconds. Acceleration is metres per second squared. Change in velocity is metres per second. Time taken is second. Velocity is a vector quantity, which means it has both a direction and a magnitude, but both speed and velocity have the same unit. Everyone always ignores this equation here, the Suvat motion equation. Do not allow yourself to be confused here. The S stands for distance. That is so important. The V is final speed. The U is initial speed. And A is acceleration. And really, there's no excuse to not get this. They've even provided the word equation here. So please, please, please don't be one of those people. Everyone falls into this trap of not recognising that S stands for distance. Do not rush, take your time. More unit talk now. Force, the unit of force is Newtons. We've got acceleration again and mass is in kg. Weight, this is an important one. People always say the unit here is kg. It's not, it's Newtons. Then we move on to electricity. Key units here. The unit of power is watts, the unit of current is amps, and the unit of voltage is volts. Charge, be careful here, the unit of charge is coulombs. And remember, sometimes they ask you for definitions like what is current? Well, use the equation to help you if you haven't managed to learn that yet. Rearrange the equation to make current the subject of the formula, so we can see that current is charge divided by time. So what is current? It's the flow of charge per unit time. Look, the equation even tells you. Notice things like refractive index have no unit because they cancel out. Look, you have your sine angle of incidence divided by your sine angle of refraction. If they ask you how to find the density of an object, state the equation that you'll need and then to talk about the different things you'll need to do in order to find that density. So you'll need to determine the mass of the object using a balance, they could ask you about accuracy to do with that balance. You'll want to lay it on a flat table and make sure there's no zero error. The volume totally depends on the object. If it's an irregular object, using the displacement method with a measuring cylinder or Eureka can here is important. Make sure you read from the bottom of the meniscus and at eye level to avoid parallax issues. So just to write that in words, so density equals mass divided by volume so you're going to use a balance to find the mass. You're going to use the displacement method with a measuring cylinder to find the volume. And they could ask for extra details to do with how you're using that apparatus. So I'll change color for that. We want to avoid zero error. We want a stable surface for that balance. The measuring cylinder needs to be read at eye level to avoid parallax issues and read from the bottom of the meniscus. Do try and use equations where possible to explain your answer. So for example, when you're talking about the Doppler effect, which is responsible for when ambulances come towards you, they have a higher pitch, they sound higher, and then when they drive away, they sound lower. So to explain that, you want to state an equation, which is wave speed equals frequency times wavelength. Remember, the wave speed of the sound wave is constant. That doesn't change. But the wavelength changes. So remember that ambulance siren sound wave will become shorter in wavelength as the ambulance approaches and then longer as the ambulance moves away. So based on the fact that V equals F lambda, if this number stays the same, this number, for example, is increased, that must mean that that frequency has decreased, hence why you hear a lower pitch. 
So EG increased wavelength means decreased frequency and a lower pitch sound is heard. Be very careful with your standard units. They'll be asking for tons of unit conversions. If they give you a number in terms of milliamps, you'll need to get that into amps. How? By dividing by a thousand. You'll be losing marks left, right and centre if you don't do that. Give you a number in terms of megawatts, you'll want to convert it into watts. How? By doing times 10 to the 6. So those are the main ones, milli and mega. Be careful.